Hello and welcome to Sunshine Sunday with Roger and Cheryl Hutchins. Roger will be up in just a few minutes to bring us the word of the Lord. And we'll give just a few minutes for some of the live folks on Facebook to get situated. But we're so thrilled that you've joined us, whether it's by the live or by the uh, videos that you'll see on YouTube and Facebook later. But we're just so thankful for the blessings of the Lord today. One thing that we can absolutely 100% depend on is the Lord Jesus Christ and our wonderful Father, the precious Holy Spirit. Father, we just um, thank you today that you are with us and that your presence is here, that you have a true word from your very own heart for the people. For all of us who are part of the body of Christ, for those who may not know you today, there's something that they will hear from your Holy Spirit. We do ask that you draw people unto you, and you've called us to a higher place. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. What a privilege it is for us, Father, you, to know you, the true and living God. What a privilege to be chosen by you and to be called according to your name. Every blessing that Jesus Christ paid for belongs to us as your people. And we receive them so gratefully, Father. We're so grateful for our redemption out of darkness, ignorance, misery, destruction into the kingdom of your marvelous light. We give you praise and honor for that. Now today, Father, we just commit this into your hands for your, your business to be attended to today. Bless Roger as he comes now and give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us today. And let the Word of God go into our innermost being and become a part of our life in our thinking processes, in our speech, and in every way so that we are truly representatives and ambassadors of the kingdom of God. And we bless you, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And here comes Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, it's good to see you today, and welcome to those that are uh, signing on to Facebook and those that are on YouTube. We really appreciate you being here today. Uh, really uh, had something on my heart for the past uh, three or four days and God just really telling me that there's people that need to uh, need a real touch from God. Uh, good to see you, Ruth. Uh, Ruth Ann. <laughs> Ruth, uh, good to see everybody coming on. And uh, uh, I want to ask you today, uh, Cheryl's already prayed, but let's just come into this uh, service today, into this message. Just open, our hearts open, our uh, spirits open, and let's see what God will do. Uh, I believe God's going to move for some people today. And, uh, you know, we've been under a lot, of, uh, a, a lot of months now of stress and different things that's been, uh, been going on. And I, no, no, I have to be honest, God has been so gracious to us in our home and in our situations. We've been kept busy and we've been doing things uh, that have been uh, very productive, very uh, uh, spirit-filled, and we just appreciate what God is doing. Uh, today, I want to go uh, go into the Word of God, and we want to go. I'm going to go to the old to the Old Testament. You know, if you listen to people today, they tell you to uh, stay away from the Old Testament, stay out of the Old Testament. We're living in the New Covenant. Uh, well, I'm going to go back. You know, God's covenant. Uh, Jesus died on the cross to make a way for for us to come into uh, everything God's got. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, even the, the Gentiles were uh, affected by the law because we were, uh, we were not even allowed to uh, think of a relationship with God, not even allowed to be uh, without coming through uh, somebody else. But see, when Jesus came, he made a way for us uh, to... Uh, enter into covenant with him. He he uh, established covenant on the cross, not just with 
uh, the Jew, not just with the seed, the natural seed of Abraham, but with uh, the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So every man, woman, boy, and girl, Jew, Greek, bond, free, black, white, uh, male, female, no matter where, what your status uh, in this earth, you are um, in the place where you can walk in relationship with God. I want to look today because there is a, a move of God uh, that is has already begun, a move of God that is moving in us. And I believe that as we enter into this day, God's preparing us. But you're going to have to shake yourself. We're, we're coming into a time whenever we're seeing the restrictions of the uh, COVID-19 uh, virus being lifted. We uh, People are returning to their church services. Uh, but I want you to truly be free. Now, can I be, can I be straight up honest with you uh, as we minister the Word of God today? Is that just because we go back into our churches doesn't mean uh, we're, we're totally free. Sometimes the churches uh, can bring us into a religious mindset uh, that keeps us bound to, tra to tradition. I want us to break tradition. I want us to understand. Uh, going to 2 Kings, uh, we're going to begin in the 6th chapter and we're going to end in the 7th chapter. I'm not going to try to read everything out of the 6th chapter, but I do want to open up in the 6th chapter because uh, I want you to see the, the setting uh, behind what's going on here in the 7th chapter. The, the prophet Elisha is... Uh, active in the land, and, and uh, Israel is desperately in need uh, of, of a prophetic word, uh, desperately in need of somebody who knows what God's doing in the earth. Uh, in uh, 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, beginning with the 24th verse, uh, it says, And it came to pass after this that uh, Ben-Hadad, uh, king of Syria, gathered all his host and went up to besiege Samaria. And there was great famine in Samaria. Now, don't you watch the watch the uh, the the situation? There was great famine in America. Uh, in um, not um, <laughs> that was a slip, but maybe it's prophetic. There was great famine uh, in Samaria, and behold, the bless uh, the the they besieged it until uh, I'm going to use I'm reading King James, so it uses. Uh, terms like like ass's head, which means a donkey's head. Uh, so I'm not using foul language for those of you that are uh, maybe worried of thinking about that. But uh, uh, until an ass's head was sold for uh, four score pieces of silver uh, and a fourth part of a dove's dung for five pieces of silver. In other words, uh, the famine was gross in the land. Now the scripture teaches us uh, prophetic. There'll come a time whenever there, there'll be a famine, not for meat and drink, but a famine for the hearing of the word of God. Now, in our current, uh, in America, in our current situation, uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, with the economics and with things uh, going the way, the economy and things going the way they are, uh, there are people that are looking at maybe famine in their land naturally. But I'm talking about a spiritual famine here. Uh, and and if you see um, uh, Benadad come up against the the uh, Samaria, uh, and can I tell you, Benadad represents uh, the enemies of God. It represents uh, it represents those things that want to bring us uh, to a place where we're not effective in the earth. But can I tell you today that God uh, wants a church in the earth that's effective, that's anointed. Uh, that is powerful, and, and that's, that means you and me, you and me that believe God, you and me that are uh, called of God, and, uh, and they were in a place where they were eating, let me say it frankly, they were eating ass's head uh, and dove's dung. What does that mean? Uh, the, they were eating the, the head or the thinking, the, the head represents the thinking. Uh, we are in a day whenever, uh, whenever people are consuming uh, all the fear tactics. They're consuming all the uh, junk uh, that's being put out uh, by, by the beastly nature, by the uh, political pundits, and by all those uh, that, are, uh, uh, that, that are trying to get control of the earth today, get control and get power. Uh, 
Uh, uh, dove's dung represents that that's left behind. Uh, many are in bondage to a past move of God. They're, they're in bondage to what the Spirit did before. But can I tell you, uh, uh, it's time for us to arise and begin to move on to the freshness of what God's doing in this day. Uh, verse 26 says, and the, king of, uh, and the king of Israel was passing by, and I'm not, I'm not going to go into this next section. It talks about these two women that were making deals to, to eat their uh, own children, to eat their own. And see, uh, it, it's a time in the earth. Watch it now. Watch it now. It's a time in the earth where there's no respect uh, and, and no consideration uh, for for the children. For those, the, It's a time in our country and all over the world where people are promoting abortion, where people are promoting all this stuff. That's not really a part of my message, but I want you to see the setting and how similar. See, the children, these women, this one woman comes and says, uh, let's... Let's boil your child today and eat it, and then tomorrow we'll do our, we'll do mine. This woman was upset because when she went back the next day, the uh, the one woman was was gone, uh, and and couldn't be. She had hid her child, and thank God, uh, somebody had sense enough to do it. Uh, she her sin was she made a she made a deal uh, that that she knew she couldn't keep, uh, and see she began to call on the king to help, uh, and the the king. Uh, here also had the, the king of Israel had uh, had a uh, they began to call on Elisha uh, to come and Elisha begins to, to prophesy but as we go into chapter 7 uh, I want to get the meat out of chapter 7 here it says then Elisha said hear the word of the Lord thus saith the Lord tomorrow about this time shall a measure of flour be sold for a shackle and two measures of barley for a shackle in the gate of Samaria. Can I tell you, the prophet of God sees God's answer. Somebody say God's answer. God's. You see, uh, it's time we learn we're not going to uh, we're not going into God's best with our own efforts in our own uh, hand. We're not going to go into God's best just because we've got uh, beautiful sanctuaries or whatever. Uh, we're going into God's best because God uh, has purposed for His people, uh, hallelujah, to reap the riches, riches of the Gentiles, the Scripture says. Uh, verse 2 says, uh, Then the Lord on whom the whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, watch this, the Pharisees always come back with a negative answer. They always try to dispute uh, what God has uh, has said through the prophet of God, the, the what God has said through, uh, through the Spirit. And I want to tell you, uh, when God begins to proclaim a thing, uh, there, there may be Pharisees to raise up. There may be those that will, uh, the naysayers we call them. But he says, behold, the Lord, uh, the Lord will uh, would make windows in heaven. Might this thing be? And he said, behold, thou shall, uh, the, the, Elisha turns to him and says, behold, uh, you're going to see it uh, with your eyes, but you're not going to, uh, you're not going to eat thereof. Now listen to me. Uh, today's the day to believe. Today's the day uh, to quit being the naysayer and to quit walking under fear and begin to say, wait a minute, uh, I, I'm going to hear the word of the Lord and I'm going to believe and act on the word of God. Uh, I feel the preacher now, so please stay with me and let's, uh, let, let, let's get the, the meat of what God's saying here. Verse 3 says, And there were four lepers. Somebody say unlikely vessels. Come on, let me prophesy to you that God is about to up, raise up some unlikely vessels. These guys uh, were lepers, and they were, uh, as far as uh, Israel was concerned, as far as the population was concerned, uh, they were unclean. They were not somebody. Uh, you would go out and say, oh, we, we, we need a move of God. Let's go out and get the four lepers down there. That uh, No. Uh, you wouldn't do that. But look what happens here. Something happens in these four lepers. And there were four lepers, uh, lepers men, uh, at the entering of the gate. What were they doing there? They're probably begging. They're probably uh, trying to get the guys, that, the, the people that were coming in, and get them to give them a handout. Uh, but he said, uh, they were sitting in the gate, and they said one to another, 
Why sit we here till we die? They got a revelation. Come on. Well, you, you can stay where you are or you can pick up and move with what God's doing in this hour. And I believe it's time that we make up our mind. We're going to move into the area and into the anointing that God has uh, chosen for us for this day. Uh, we're not going to sit right here and die uh, in, in, in religiosity. We're not going to die in fear. Can I tell you, I've been surprised at the people that, that uh, are still setting back in fear uh, because of, of the virus that came. Uh, but I want to tell you something, uh, that God has not given us the spirit of fear. So there's something rising up within our hearts and we're beginning to realize we're not sitting here until we die. Don't go back to your church and sit down in your church when there's famine in the land and whenever that uh, whenever that God is calling us into a new day, into a new place, let's don't keep eating ass's head and dove's dung. Uh, hallelujah! The mind of the beast and, and the, the the mind the the, the move of the past. Uh, the, move of God. Uh, come on, we need a fresh move of the Holy Spirit. Don't keep marching around this mountain and eating the and, and eating the same thing, trying to eat the same thing every day because it's turned into worm bread. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 4 says, uh, if we say if we say we will enter into the city, uh, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now, therefore, come and let us fall into the host, uh, host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, uh, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. In other words, what have we got to lose? <laughs> if we go in there and they kill us, we're going to die anyhow. Because there's famine in the city. There's nothing in there for us. There's nothing in, there's no life. There's no bread. Come on. The, 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 the Spirit of God, Jesus said, the words that I speak, there's spirit in the life. Don't sit down somewhere where there's no spirit in life uh, and die, but arise and begin to seek after uh, the living bread and know that God uh, will save us alive. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> If we go into the Syrians camp and they kill us, we're just going to die. But we're going to die here. If we go into the city, there's famine there. They're, 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 they're eating asses, head, and doves, dungs, and they're boiling their children. So how are we going to uh, survive there? Verse 5, uh, and there arose, they arose at twilight. In other words, it's neither light, it's neither dark, but they said, wait a minute, we're going to go, we're going to do this by faith. We're going to rise up uh, at twilight and we're going to do this thing uh, because uh, something in us tells us why sit we here till we die. Okay. They rose up at twilight and go into the, go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of the Syrians, behold, there uh, there was no man there. <laughs> They're expecting the armies of the Syrians to be there. They're expecting armed guard. They're expecting all these uh, things. But but all it took was four leprous men, four unlikely candidates to rise up with a revelation, to rise up in faith and say, wait a minute, we're not going to sit here and die, but we're going to go forth uh, into the enemy's camp. We're going to go forth believing that God is going to do something uh, for us. For the Lord, verse 6 says, For the Lord had made the Syrians hear a noise. Come on. As these four leprous men, there's just four men, four, four leprous men. As these four leprous men got up and they began to walk in faith uh, toward that Syrian camp, God calls uh, that those uh, that Syrian army uh, to begin to hear a noise. Come on, see and here here as we uh, as we rise up in faith, can I tell you? Uh, today that God's going to send out a, 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 a trumpet, a message a, 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 that's going to scatter the enemy. Hallelujah. Uh, let faith arise and let your enemies be scattered, uh, the scripture says. There's no volume. Sure. It's okay. okay. Let's just 
Amen. Well, we got uh, problems on one of the cameras, but I'm pretty sure we're still going on uh, Facebook, so we're just going to stick with that. Uh, thank you, Father. And verse 6 says, For the Lord had made the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and the noise of horses, even the noise of the great host, even noise of the great host, and they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians uh, to come upon us. So they think there's three armies, the, the, uh, the Israelites, uh, the Egyptians, uh, and, and uh, the, the Hittites. They think there's three armies coming because of this noise they're hearing. But can I tell you, even the king of Israel is setting back uh, in caution because he doesn't want to go forth into a defeat uh, in 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 uh, war against Syria, verse eight says, "And when the lepers came to the uttermost parts, watch what happens now. These are four unlikely char characters, but God is doing something in the midst of them. Uh, so, and when the lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into the tent and did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment." and went and hid it. Now watch what they're doing here. But God's about to correct them. Uh, they went and hid it. They got the silver and gold. They began to gather uh, out of the Syrian camp. All the things that the Syrians got up and fled because they heard a noise. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, uh, even when the Apostle Paul, uh, God was speaking and moving with the Apostle Paul, uh, can I tell you, uh, some heard, just heard a noise. They heard it thunder. They heard, uh, they heard things uh, that 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 uh, different than what Saul heard, but can I tell you, uh, these four lepers men heard, "Why sit we here till the till we die?" And whenever they heard that, and they got up and began to act, uh, then God began to move the enemies out of the way. And when they went into the camp, they began to gather the silver, the gold, the raiment, and went and hid it. Come on, did you know the Bible says we will reap the riches of the Gentiles? Can I tell you today that God is setting the stage uh, for, a, for a, a, a wealth transfer? Come on, preacher. You've been struggling for years. It's time to raise up and believe God, and let's watch what God will do. Hallelujah. Uh, and they entered in again uh, to the tent and carried thence also uh, and went and hid it. Uh, then verse 9 says, Then they said one to another, Why do we do not well? This isn't good for us just to carry this and hide it. The, this day in the this day is a good uh, day of tidings, and we hold if we hold our peace, if we tarry till morning light, some mischief will come upon us. And now, therefore, come that we may go and tell the king's household. Come on, can I tell you, God has more than enough. There's no use to hoard uh, up the blessings of God that God's sending all to ourselves. But let's take what God is doing, what God is sending, and let's believe God. Watch watch what happens now. Uh, so they came and ca uh, called unto the porter of the city, and they told them, saying, We come to the camp of the Syrians, and, and behold, there was no man near neither there neither was was voice of man but horses tied and asses tied and and the tent that as they were and he came to the porter and they told the king uh, the king's house within verse 12 says and the king arose in the night and said to the servants i will now uh, show what the syrians have done unto us in other words, he says, I, I know what they're doing, uh, have done unto us. They know that we are hungry, therefore uh, they, they, they go not into the camp uh, to hide themselves, saying, when they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. Verse 13, now watch. See, the, it shows the fear that even this king uh, has on him and that's why the enemy uh, plunders us that's why the enemy keeps us uh, from the blessings that he wants us to have because we walk in fear can i tell you today 
today. Listen to me. Somebody's been walking in fear. Somebody's been, uh, been, been losing out on the blessings God has uh, for you. But today, God is turning it around. Uh, and one of the servants answered and said, uh, Let some take, I pray thee, five, uh, five of the horses uh, that remain, which are left in the city. Behold, and they are as all the multitude of Israel uh, are left in it. Uh, behold, I say, they are even as all the multitude of Israel uh, that are consumed, and let us send and see. In other words, let's take these five horses, look, let's mount them up, let's go see what's going on. Uh, they took therefore the chariots of horses, and the king sent after the horses, and the Syrians say, Go ye, go and see. And verse 15, And they went after them, and lo, all the way, all the way was full of garments and vessels, uh, which the Syrians had cast away in their haste, and the major uh, messenger returned and told the king. And the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. Now, what brought all this about? Four unlikely candidates. Somebody that said, we're not going to sit here and die. Somebody that said, uh, we, 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 back, back in the mountains of North Carolina, we used to call it between a rock and a hard place. They, they said, we're between a rock and a hard place. We're, we're, we can't go into the city because they're starving to death in there. Uh, if we sit here, we're going to die. Uh, let's rise up and see what will happen if we go into that camp. Uh, can I tell you, today it's time, God said to somebody, it's time to rise up and move. It's time to rise up and begin to go and believe God uh, for the blessings that's been waiting on you. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shackle. Remember Elisha's prophecy? Come on, he, Elisha prophesied uh, a measure of fine flour for, was sold for a shackle and two measures of barley uh, for a shackle according to the word of the Lord. Can I tell you, whenever God speaks, you might ought to listen. Because when God speaks, and I'm going to tell you, speaking today, there, there are some days ahead whenever you're going to need to say that. You're going to need to shake yourself and say, I'm not sitting here till I die. I'm, a, I'm going to rise. I'm going to go forth. Uh, I'm going to walk right into what God has uh, promised us. The devil can't keep us. The enemy, the, 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 the Syrians aren't going to keep us afraid. The, the, the words of the, uh, of the Pharisees that was spoken and says, if when God opened the windows of heaven, this will be. Come on, uh, it's time to quit listening to all those other voices and to begin to listen to the Holy Ghost that's speaking to us within. Verse 17. It uh, says, and the king and the king appointed the Lord, on who whose hand uh, he leaned, to have charge of the gate. And the now watch, <laughs> you remember him? He's the one that stood up and he tried to refute what Elisha had prophesied. He tried to say, uh, if the windows of heaven were open, this will this will be. And he tried to. Uh, talk down and, and, and just put down what God was saying through the prophet. Uh, but he said, and and the people trod him in the gate and he died. As many of, as as the man of God said, who spake when the king came down to him. And it came to pass, as the man of God had spoken to the king saying, two measures of barley for a shackle and a measure of fine flour for a shackle shall be tomorrow about the same time in Samaria. Uh, come on, can I tell you? He saw it, uh, but uh, but he didn't eat of it. Why? Because he uh, he was put in charge, no doubt, trying to restrain the people, trying to control the move of God. Uh, but they 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 ran over him. Come on, I'm going to tell you uh, that the hungry people are going to rise and they're going to walk right over uh, the words of the naysayers. They're going to walk right over uh, those that try to hold us back uh, from what God is doing in this day. Verse 19. And the Lord uh, answered the man of God. And now behold, the Lord shall uh, make windows. Behold, now the Lord, if the Lord shall make windows in heaven, uh, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with your eyes and shall not taste, uh, shall eat thereof. Verse 20. 
and it shall, and it, and so it fell un, out unto him, for the people trod him in the gate, and he, and he died. Now, can I tell you, uh, I don't want you to be like the Pharisee, the, the, the guy that, that this, this man that, that spoke negative of what the prophet was saying and wound up dying before he ever was able to eat of what God had, uh, what God had promised and what God said. Uh, but I want you to be like those four lepers. You say, oh, well, I don't be like four lepers. I don't be, come on, four lepers, it wasn't what they were, what was happening on the outside of them. It was what was happening on the inside of them. On the inside of them, they said, why sit we here till we die? And there's something on the inside of me today. They're saying, we're not going to sit in our, our seats of religiosity. We're not going to sit in our, uh, in, in our, uh, places of comfort because God is saying if we will arise and we will begin to go forth, uh, we can see a move of God uh, beginning to move in the earth. God's thoughts over us are good and not evil and God desires uh, for us to step forth and take it, the kingdom of God, take uh, suffer the violence and the violent take it by force. You've got to take what God has promised you, you've got to raise up and say, wait a minute, uh, it's mine. We used to sing a little children's song way back, every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse and every line. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand on that right now. Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse and every line. So let's stand on that and believe God for what he's doing. Now, if you're sitting here listening to me today, you're watching this video uh, later, whatever, whatever time frame you're watching in, I want you to know something. God gave me this for you. And I want to tell you today, uh, you're not going to sit there and die. You go, there's something in you that's beginning to rise up. There's something in you beginning to be stirred. And, and as you go forward, I'm, I'm going to tell you the power of the Holy Ghost uh, shall come upon us. And we're going to begin to take the... Uh, take the enemy's camp and, and, and begin to plunder it and take what God has promised for us. Now, first of all, the first thing I want uh, is, is the spiritual blessings of God. I want God to fill me with, 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 with his spirit uh, and with his power, his anointing, uh, so much that I can affect the, the lives, your life, and the life of those uh, that God has set before us. Uh, also, to do that, uh, God also is going to provide that there, there is a transfer of wealth that's about to happen, and we've got to set our play, ourselves in place, in a, in a place where we can receive it. Those four lepers said, wait a minute, we can't, there's nothing going to happen here. There's nothing but death here. Let's move out. Let's move uh, uh, into the unlikely place of the enemy's camp, and let's believe God. Will you do that with me today? Hallelujah. Somebody's had to be, uh, come on, children, be with me. Somebody's had to believe God. Somebody's sitting in a place right now that you have no choice but to believe God. Uh, you, 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 during this uh, last few months, uh, you've been out of work. You've been, you, 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 the, 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 and you're looking ahead and you're thinking, what, we, what are we going to do uh, going ahead because everything's out of whack. But I'm going to tell you, don't sit there and die. Rise up in faith. Somebody say in faith right now. In faith. Rise up in faith. Hallelujah. And begin to take what God's promised because it's yours. Now, I want to speak to the spirit of fear that's been on people because fear can bind you. Religion can bind you. Reli Come on. Uh, don't let, don't let the, Samaria, the spiritual Samaria uh, that's in famine uh, and eating, eating the ass's head and the dove's dung, uh, don't do that. Hallelujah. Begin to eat of the Word of God. Begin to get in the, the truth of the Word of God and let God begin to stir you up in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Sure, you got any closing uh, remarks? Well, it's just been on my mind that when we do not receive and take to ourselves the blessings of God, or when we have a difficult time yeah. believing that they're ours, or we're living in so much fear we don't know what to do, it's because there's a lack of the revelation of the true love of God for you personally. Yeah. I I know I've been there and the the thing about it is is 
The only thing that's going to change that, a couple of things, one will be really looking into the Word of God to see what God says Amen. about loving you. And the other thing is, is making a true decision that you're going to believe God and you're going to believe in His love. The Scripture teaches us to fight the good fight of faith. And sometimes it's a real fight because when our soul is not accustomed to peace, and many people's soul is constantly agitated and worried and fearful and a whole host of other emotions, you have to learn. And these are things we learn as we grow up in the Lord. You learn to fight the good fight of faith. You learn to speak what the Bible says. And sometimes it takes practice. But you know the old makes perfect? <laughs> well, practice brings us into a place where we can truly believe what God says. Take time to meditate on the Word of God. Don't just let your emotions and all these fearful thoughts and things control you. Um, we've heard the Word of the Lord today. Thank you, Father. These were lepers. We don't have leprosy. Thank God for that. We're healthy people. We've got a sound mind. We can rise up above these things. Let's join together and do this. Amen. I want to pray for you, especially those of you that, that, that you're sitting in fear. You don't know how to go forward. You, you're desperate to, be, be, uh, to have the life of God flowing in your spirit. Right now, lift your hands to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord, that the spirit of fear is cast down. God, we thank you, Lord, that, that power and love and a sound mind operating flow in us. God, bring on us that boldness that these four lepers have, that we arise, uh, we arise from a state of famine. We arise from a state of poverty and begging. We arise and say, wait a minute, we're not going to sit here and die, but we're going to go forward and we're going to believe God. Amen. God's moving for somebody right now. Also, there's, there's somebody being... Uh, heal of a the problem I, I sense it in your neck uh, in your neck there's somebody there's uh, the, the the artery something there's something going on there father in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord and we speak uh, healing to that uh, to that artery God I thank you Lord also somebody in your right foot you've had uh, I, I don't know if it's a there, there's something going on in your right foot a bruise or something that uh, is just caused an injury, a, a soreness that won't go away. Uh, we cast that down. Father, I thank you, Lord. We come against cancer and all any any kind of deadly disease that will try to come against today. God, we arise in faith. We arise in faith. Say that. I arise in faith I right arise now. In faith right and I believe now. God. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for letting us come into your home. Thank you for letting us uh, join you today. And we pray that you receive the word of the Lord and that God will do mighty and special things uh, in your heart and in your spirit. And uh, today, as we pray for you, we continue to believe. I'm going to end with a little song that's been going over and over in me. Shackled by a heavy burden Beneath a load of guilt and shame then the hand of Jesus touched me. And now, right now, I'm no longer the same. Because he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know He touched me, and He made me whole. Well, since I met this blessed Savior, have you met Him today? Since He cleansed and made me whole. I will never cease to praise Him. I will shout it while eternity rolls. Because He touched me. Oh, He touched me. And oh, the joy 
that floods my soul. Something wonderful happened, and now I know he touched me and he made me whole. Let him touch you today. Something wonderful will happen. God bless.